Troutless for small rivers and streams can be daunting if you've just started out trout, trout fishing what to buy there's so many variations and different types of lures and spinners and spoons and blades and all sorts uh, hopefully this video will uh, clear up clear up uh, some some questions you have about where to start and what to buy spinners will will always be uh, the go the go to lure when it comes to trout they they they've been proven and they go back years and years and years uh, it's probably the lure what's caught the most most trout they come in yeah various sizes different blades dif different shaft lengths uh, there's ones for longer casting uh, there's one for ones what uh, dive deeper in general spinners do want to come up to the surface they'll work in most waters rapid water still water there's a spinner for every water if we start from uh, start from the top you've got your french blade ones these are the most like classic uh, spinner uh, french blade come un undressed and dressed uh, the dressed ones have usually like a little fly looking thing what cover cover the treble hook uh, the un undressed ones of course are just just the tre treble hook uh, you, what I usually do is cut the treble hook off put a single inline hook on and uh, sometimes put a little grub tail a little grub tail to hide the hook and give it give it a little bit more action uh, then you have you you, you willow leaf blade ones, uh, these, I think they spin at a, at a less steep angle. Uh, they seem to work better in shallower water, uh, fast flowing water, they're, they're great. Uh, then you have your, your blue fox vibrix, vibrix ones, they're kind of like in a category of their own because uh, blue blue fox have a, have a patent on this uh, this bell housing with a little little brass cog in it and the, the little brass cog spins around and rubs against the the bell housing and that supposedly causes like a ultrasonic vibration what trout find irre irresistible uh, then you have your, your black fu furies these are these are hugely hugely popular uh, the black furies they have black blade uh, and then the dot colors come in lots of different variations white yellow uh, orange red all sorts but people swear by these I I find the blade spins spins a little bit slower than the French blade and the willow blade ones uh, and then you have your your your, your minnow one uh, basically, minnow body with a with a spinner on it. Instead of it having that wobble action, uh, the the spinner blade gives the action. Uh, the these are usually quite weighty, so they're the 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 good good casters are these. Not but the not but spinners in general are not good casters, but these these seem to cast a, well. They do cast a lot further than the than the normal spinners, but. Casting distance is uh, is fine on uh, on on spinners. You won't have a problem. Size wise, uh, you've got the range what I fish with is size O O all the way to size two. So the lower the number, the smaller smaller the spinner. Uh, you have O O uh, O. Uh, do we have a number one? Number one and a number two. Small streams, uh, zero zero, maybe a zero, work good. Small rivers, all the way up to size two, uh, zero zero, work in, in, in small rivers as well. Uh, size two for those larger fish. Uh, when it comes to trout, trout are not very, uh, they're not very too worried about size. Just because you're using a small lure doesn't mean you will just catch small fish. Uh, uh, Big trout will go for small lures as well, especially in the beginning of the season. Season when they're trying to fat, fatten up, they'll pretty much go for anything. 
uh, size wise uh, you'll, you'll, you'll catch you'll catch uh, larger trout on, on small small lures no problem uh, springtime and then summertime uh, they've fattened up and they're a bit more lazy uh, the bigger trout tend to go for a little bit bigger bigger lures at, at, at that time but I think I think that covers uh, spinners if you have any more questions oh, there's one there's one more spinner what I'm missing uh, that's long cast long casting uh, spinner uh, don't have one of those there's they're more for open waters like uh, reservoirs lakes and uh, larger rivers uh, the waters I fish for trout uh, streams and rivers so uh, I don't have any I don't have any uh, long distance ones uh, uh, casting long distance uh, use uh, um, um, minnow spinner uh, they're, they're good good casters moving on to uh, minnows wobblers uh, there's usually two types you've got your hard bodied plastic ones with a hollow core and then you have your solo, solid body, uh, bodied ones with a uh, epoxy resin coating usually it is it's thin coating uh, they do look very similar but they fish they fish differently uh, the, the, the hollow cord ones usually have a rattle in them as well uh, where the solid cord ones usually don't have a rattle uh, the main difference between the two is uh, these ones have better casting distance than the solid cord ones uh, and the hard plastic ones are a lot more durable than the solid core ones. The, the, the solid core ones, the core is usually a, a, a foam or a balsa wood. Uh, and like I previously said, with an epoxy coating. So they're more prone to chipping, cracking. Uh, they won't last as long as the, the, the uh, hard bodied one, uh, the hard plastic ones. They, um, yeah, they'll, they'll, they tend to chip they'll crack like this one uh, this one is pretty much cracked right through and the only thing what's holding it together is the the uh, stainless steel wire uh, what runs through the body uh, it's it's not the end of the world uh, a bit of super glue will fix that and it'll be like new again uh, but they won't last this long it's it's not like they it's not like they're going to break after you've used them a couple of times. It's just that they'll chip and uh, yeah, they, you might get cracking them and, uh, and things like that. Uh, the solid body ones, they're great for close quarters. Um, they, the the weight weight to size ratio is uh, the weight weight uh, the weight of them compared to these will be lower so when you cast in with these they, they they land gently in the water they don't they don't tend to spook the trout as much uh, uh, the casting distance on these is uh, is pretty miserable so it, it's close close quarter, quarter fishing with this you won't be casting more than like 10 15 yards with them if that uh, but they do land softly in the water they don't they don't spook the trout as much uh, as the hard bodied ones do they're more they've got greater casting distance uh, overall the hard plastic ones uh, they are they're more they have a wider span of fishing than than, than the, the solid car ones they uh, you, you can use these in a lot more situations than you can the solid car ones uh, but again they are great for not spooking spooking the trout they land very softly in the water don't give off a big impact when they do land and uh, yeah soft uh, both of them come in sinking floating and uh, suspending uh, variations they'll all have uh, different types of lips uh, for the depth of uh, how deep the dive uh, if you want them to be just subsurface or if you want to get down in those deeper holes there's a there's a variation uh, for every type of water, uh, for fast flowing water, for still water, all types of waters, you, you, you'll find them. You'll find a, var a variation of them for it. Uh, I think, like uh, the main brands would be uh, here in Europe would be Rapala, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Salmo, uh, Wabat, Goldie. 
Abu, uh, Fox Rage, Echo Gear. Uh, Echo Gear maybe not so much. They kind of hard to 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 find. Uh, the I think the original the original um, maker of them were Rapala, the the Finnish company. Uh, they do great great quality uh, lures. Uh, they do the hard bodied plastic ones and the 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 solid car ones. Uh, the original uh, the, this is an original balsa wood one. And like I say, sink, sinking sinking floating and suspending variations of them. Uh, floating one just go subsurface. Uh, the sinking ones, uh, uh, you can choose what depth you want to fish them at. You just let them, just let them sink. You can count. That's why the repellers are uh, uh, called uh, the original countdown. You count one, two, three, four. Start retrieving. You can uh, fish at any depth with them. <clears throat> the suspending ones, they're great for when the uh, trout are territorial. Uh, you can put uh, slap on a. a a suspending uh, trout coloured one and uh, if you see see trout following your lure on retrieve but they're not biting it they're just following it out of their area uh, a suspending one you can you can stop and twitch it a little little bit and th that might get them to to get that to get that territorial bite on uh, yeah the uh, fantastic fun when they're in in that mood uh, they're not always in that mood, but uh, springtime they they're usually pretty pretty territorial, and they they don't want any other trout in uh, feeding in their 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 area. But yeah, uh, both I, I I don't know if I mentioned, but the the hard hard bodied hollow ones usually have a rattle in them. The soft bodied ones don't. Uh, I've never I've never seen a. A solid body one with a with a rattle in it. They usually have no rattle. They the the more gentle and uh, stealth stealthy when when the the good for when the fish fish are, fish are in that that mood where they um, they don't they get spooked easily. Uh, then you want to go with with these. Uh, you've got to see you've got to look at lures like uh, like it's a toolbox. You have a you have a a tool for for different types of water, what mood they're in, and uh, yeah, so it, it, see them as tools. Uh, moving on, got snap beans. Uh, snap beans have become immensely popular. Uh, they they're great fun to fish with. Uh, they're basically a small a small plug, a smaller version of the plug. Uh, Usually represent like a beetle, some kind of bug or something, something like that. Again, uh, the, uh, there's different variations with lip. Uh, this is uh, almost the This lip is almost at 90 degree angle. So this will uh, this will chug along the surface. It'll sit sit on the surface and wobble backwards and forwards, and it'll be like a beetle trying get trying to get back back to the bank. Uh, great great way of uh, fishing snap beans is uh, is uh, fishing across the stream or the river, uh, making it look like the bug is trying to get back to land. Uh, you don't really fish them up or or down uh, the river, just across across the river. Uh, one technique I have is uh, overhanging trees and bushes. I'll throw it throw it close to the bushes and the overhanging trees and it, it mimics like a like a, a bug or a beetle what has uh, fallen off fallen off a tree branch and uh, sometimes they'll strike it as soon as it hits hits the water they'll they'll, they'll think it's a beetle what's just just fall, fallen in and they'll strike it straight away uh, again you have the different diving depths with them uh, floating suspending and sinking ones. Uh, some work good in rapid water, fast flowing water. Some some will work better in uh, uh, still still water. When it comes to when it comes to snap beans, there's 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 lots of Chi Chinese variations of them. Uh, they're dirt cheap. You'll probably pay a pound fifty p each for them. Start out with the 
Start out with the Chinese ones until you get your, your casting down and uh, then you can buy a bit more ex more expensive one. Uh, the Chinese ones tend not to work very well in, in faster flowing water. Uh, slow retrieval and uh, still water, the, the Chinese ones work if, you, if, you go, if you're going to be fishing in, uh, in uh, fast flowing streams or white water or something like that you probably want to go with like a, a Salmo Tiny or something like that if the, if the trout are feeding off the, the surface then you want like a, this Wobart Beetle or this Salmo Beetle one um, they're great fun because uh, they'll, they'll 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 attack them off the surface. Uh, but yeah, start with Chinese ones, uh, and then uh, uh, you can go for the more expensive ones. The uh, I think I think uh, they're called Yuri or something like that. Uh, you got your Wobat, you got your Salmo, Chinese, 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 another Salmo. Uh, great fun to fish, uh, to fish with. You'll catch both big trout and small trout on those. I've had some of my larger larger trout on 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 snap beans. Um, moving on to wobbler, uh, uh, not wobblers, plugs. So plugs, um, probably a larger version of the the snap beans. Uh, they give off lot, lots of actions, lots of action in the water. Uh, good at spring beginning of summer when uh, trout are trying to fatten up uh, they're not too spooked about about things uh, they give off lots of lots of uh, lots of action fast vibrating again they come uh, different variations suspending sinking floating uh, usually have a rattle in them not always though and again uh, different lips uh, almost this one almost at a 90 degree angle, it'll just chug along subsurface. Uh, then you have a lip with less angle, that'll be more deeper diving, get down in those deeper holes. Uh, plugs are not your go-to lure for, for trout, but they do work. Uh, there's time and a place for them. Uh, again, got to look at your, your lures uh, like tools, uh, you'll come to a be walking walking along the bank or something like that, and you'll see oh there's a there's a deep hole here. Want to get want to get lower, but goes down deep. Perfect with uh, something like this, this uh, goldie with uh, where the lip is almost in line line with the lower. This will this one will dive down pretty deep. Uh, but yeah, they they. They are not you go to the lure for trout, but they do work for trout, no problems at all. Uh, then you have your your blades. Uh, your blades uh, they're a bit like spinners. They give off lots of vibration in the water. Uh, they uh, they can spook the fish at times. Uh, blades have a time and a place. Uh, you need they're not really for for streams for small streams. You need probably about knee knee deep water to fish fish these in uh, again they come in different variations uh, weight wise uh, probably start about three grams and they'll go up to uh, I, I, I don't know I fish three to five grams uh, they're a bit messy they, they, they tend to tangle on themselves and uh, stuff like that but uh, yeah trout trout really go for these uh, but they can spook the trout. Uh, durability, they're pretty durable unless you smack them against the rock or something like that because the, there's a lead weight at the bottom of them and you can, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll deform, not but it really does anything to the action or anything like that. They still, they still work pretty good. Uh, then you have your spoons. Spoons are more for open water. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about them because I don't really use them that much. They're more for your open water like uh, reservoirs, uh, lakes and uh, rivers. Uh, you can get micro versions of them for streams and small rivers. Uh, I'm not a fan of them. Uh, your main make will be, uh, your main make for spoons will probably be uh, Abu. 
Uh, they've been making spoons for God knows how many years. This is probably the original trout lure where people made them out of, uh, yeah, a spoon. Uh, they have a time and place, the good casters, wind, wind doesn't affect them too much. Uh, like, if it's windy, uh, your solid car ones are miserable, they're miserable to fish with. If it if it's windy, the, the wind will pick, pick them up quite easily and uh, yeah, it won't go where you want it to go and you, yeah, they're, they're, they're terrible. Uh, so if you're just starting, I'd get some spinners. Uh, maybe try some different blades. I think uh, I think Maps, uh, good brand. Uh, I think they do a trout kit. Uh, different different types of blades, dressed ones, undressed ones. I think you get like uh, seven seven in a pack or something like that. They're not too expensive. Uh, you can pick them up on eBay, pretty cheap. Um, Maps is a good brand. Uh, Blue Fox is a good brand. Maybe pick up a couple of Mapses and a. Uh, some blue fox uh, uh, spinners see which ones work best for you in your waters uh, I'd definitely get the, the hard bodied plastic ones uh, they're, they're a great all round uh, lure uh, if you're fishing if you're fishing uh, streams uh, you probably want to go from uh, 1 gram up to about 3 grams uh, smaller rivers you can go all the way up to about five five grams uh, the the larger ones here at the top I think they were weigh about uh, 10 grams you, you you'd need you'd need some water to to, to, to work these in but yeah the stick it, stick around about five grams all the way down to a gram like I said before uh, just because it's a small bit doesn't mean uh, you won't catch a big trout on it uh, Early season, yeah, trout will, trout will gobble up pretty much anything. Uh, snap beans, great fun. I'd pick up a couple of couple of snap beans. Um, yeah, really, re really good, really good fun. Uh, the wobblers, you, uh, well, the plugs, the plugs you can skip in the beginning. Uh, they they do have a time and a place. But uh, you, you you won't need you won't need them in uh, right at the beginning. Uh, if you want, pick up a blade. They do work. They will catch they will catch your trout. Uh, like I said before, there's so many variations of spinners. You you you'll just have to go out there read a bit more about them. Um, I think Maps on their website they have a they have a like a lure guide. You just uh, you just choose what you're fishing for. If you're fishing for wild brown, brown trout, um, click that in, and it will show all the spinners for for for, for brown trout what they sell. Uh, great guide. But uh, yeah, uh, the solid core ones, I, I'd leave I'd leave in the beginning until you've you've uh, you've got your your casting skills. Uh, going not but uh, not but the small these smaller lures are hard uh, to cast or anyf anything like that but uh, they can be a little bit tricky at time but if you just if you spend a solid day just casting uh, you you you'll get it down no problem usually what I have in my tackle box will be a couple of snap beans some hard bodies, uh, some sol solid car ones, and a couple of couple of spinners. Uh, that'll cover uh, that'll cover the stretch of water I I fish. Uh, my water uh, it varies a lot uh, along along the stretch. Uh, I've like I don't know ankle deep water uh, all all the way down to to about seven seven foot about just over two meters or something like that in some pools uh, so uh, I, I like to have I like to have the tools for the job as, as I previously said uh, for shallow water and uh, deeper water and faster flowing water uh, there's areas on my river where it's really fast really fast flowing then you can have a couple of snap beans on or a smaller minnow or something like that uh, large, larger, the larger sizes tend to not work as well in uh, in uh, faster flowing uh, water. They'll 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 start to 
to barrel roll and not stay steady steady in the water the the smaller ones are more stable in in the water uh, floating ones you can uh, you don't need to really cast very far with them uh, if you if you if you've got a nice stretch of fast flowing water you can just just cast it cast it down in the water let the current let the current take it away uh, and then just retrieve slowly back and uh, yeah that'll catch you some that'll catch you fish and uh, you'll cover a lot of water uh, with that method when it comes to colors uh, I wouldn't get too caught up in colors um, like I previously said if they're in if they're territorial uh, throw some throw, throw something on with trout colors uh, that works uh, you've got your neon neon color colors and your your, your darker colors. Uh, generally, uh, neon colors work here in clearer water. Uh, darker colors will work in murky water. Uh, the reasoning being is, but uh, fluorescent colors seem to piss the trout off. Uh, if it's summertime, water's really clear. Uh, they just laid there lazy and around just eat, feeding off things what comes right in front of the nose uh, stick a stick a fluorescent uh, colour on and it will uh, tends to piss them off and they'll go for it uh, darker colours they will um, in murky water all they see is a shadow uh, fast retrieval and uh, get that reaction strike uh, Trout don't think too much. Uh, they they go mostly on instincts, uh, like most fish. They they're not thinkers. Uh, they 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 react to the things what happen around them. Uh, this this one is uh, a clear clear one, well almost clear, and um, the water color will give this color. So it'll be like a bit like a like a ghost fish. It's the same. It's the same principle as the the, the, the darker, darker coloured one. Uh, they'll see they'll see a shadow, uh, fast retrieval. Uh, they'll see a, a, a shadow go past, and uh, it'll be a reaction strike. Great, great for reaction strikes of the clear, clear, clear bodied ones. Uh, usually, what I do at the beginning of season is. Get my landing net, scoop up some minnows, uh, take a photo, and uh, go home. Get the get the sharpie marker out, and uh, just just take a little minnow lure, and uh, yeah, just paint it basically uh, the same colours as the minnows in my water, and uh, that usually works. You don't have to be uh, a great artist or anything like that. Just as you can see, mine's not the the not painted the best but it it works uh, uh, it's not like these it's not like they stand still and you know they're having a good look at them this just whizzes by it whizzes by them and uh, they'll see a blur of color and uh, they'll think it's uh, a minnow what's what what's around in those waters uh, same same thing with snap beans you can you, you can mimic Mimic the, the the colors for insects and uh, small fish water in your water, uh, but you don't need to go too crazy on colors. Most colors will work. Uh, bright ones like you can fish. You can fish neo neon ones in 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 murky water. Uh, it'll work. It's just I find them find them better in in clear water. Same thing with the darker ones. They'll work. They will work in uh, in clear water, but uh, they tend to to work better in murky water when you're trying to get those get those reaction strikes. Uh, depending, trout are very moody. Um, over time, you will uh, get down what kind of mood the trout are in and what they're looking for. Again, that's why I say uh, look at your lures like the tools and tools in your toolbox. Uh, there's a tool tool for every job depending on what mood they're in what what waters you, you you're fishing and uh, uh, the time and place uh, but yeah see it's that you, you're adding you're adding tools to your toolbox and over time you'll have a 
you'll uh, you you'll you'll collect you'll collect lures and um, you you'll have a, a specific lure for every situation. Again, go go get some spinners. They they're proven. They always work. Uh, they, they they'll be your, they'll be your top top lure uh, in the beginning. They kind of they kind of get boring to fish with. Uh, and then you can go over to snap beans and uh, your minnows. What what are a bit more bit more fun to fish with because you're you're kind of putting more of the action in into them rather than just straight re retrieving like you do with spinners. Uh, spinners you can you can stop and let them sink and then uh, uh, retrieve them back up and uh, kind of like jigging along. Uh, like that but uh, in general it's just a, a straight retrieval you can re retrieve them fast try and get that uh, reaction strike out of them or retrieve slowly uh, depend just depending what mood they're in just see what works try try it out uh, see see what see what's working that, that day um, but yeah uh, definitely if I could choose like three I'd go with a couple of spinners uh, I'd go with the hard-bodied hollow core minnows, and uh, I'd grab some uh, snap snap beans. And you, if there's trout in the water, you'll definitely be catching catching uh, trout trout with those those three lures. And then if you want to extend your your lure box, you can you, you can get some plugs, uh, get some solid core uh, minnows, maybe some uh, blades, uh, spoons. Yeah, you, you know, if you can find if you can find some uh, tiny lightweight uh, spoons for small rivers and streams, uh, you get a couple of those as well. So try them out. See, they're not too expensive at spoons. They're they're pretty cheap. Uh, when it comes to spinners, I'd stay away from the Chinese ones. Generally, they're pretty rubbish, uh, and the the good good brand ones like Meps, Blue Fox. Yeah, the Chinese the Chinese ones they they usually yeah, rubbish rubbish metals they use they tend to rust and the hooks uh, the, the time you've, you've sorted them all out you've you've spent a, spent as much on hooks and stuff uh, as as the 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 quality brand ones and you, you usually can pick them up on eBay pretty cheap. Uh, yeah, so I think that about covers it for today. I hope uh, hope this video helped. Um, if you're new to trap fishing, uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please just leave a comment. Uh, I'll answer all the all the questions you have. Uh, if you have any any uh, feedback about about the channel or anything like that, please just leave a leave a comment. Um, next time, maybe we'll talk a bit more about uh, rods and reels. Um, the reason why I use in inline hooks instead of trebles and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll try and make a video on that. Uh, until next time, take care and thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe if this video helped you. Take care.